So, um, so yeah, you can't, even as an owner of a football club, you can't just walk away from it. You still have to sell it some way. So you have to transfer ownership somewhere. Now, when I say ownership, I'm talking about, he used the word advisedly, stewardship. Mm. Now, the charitable foundation at Chelsea was set up in 2010. If you remember, Abramovich bought the club in 2003. There was a relentless drive towards trophy winning. He was new to the country. Nobody really knew, knew who he was. In fact, I was working at AFP back in 2002, three when he bought the club. And I was one of the few people who actually heard of him because I'd done business stories. I knew that he was the, he was in control of Sibneft and he'd been a governor in, in, in Moscow, just outside Moscow. So, up until 2010, his reputation was solidified as, as somebody who was ruthless and he was trophy-driven. They decided to set up the foundation, the charitable foundation, to kind of smooth off the rough edges. Remember we talked yesterday about how organisations or countries even or, or businesses buy football clubs to kind of improve their image. Well, Launder their reputation. Launder, that's the phrase you use. Yeah. And it's absolutely, you encapsulate it just perfectly there, Anne, because that's exactly what they needed to do. Now, it's become quite important at Chelsea, this charitable foundation, um, I don't think they imagined in a million years that within, within 12 years they'd be running the club. But that's effectively what's happening now. The Charitable Foundation is made up of people like Hugh Robertson, the former sports minister, uh, the chairman of the British Olympic Committee, uh, Emma Hayes, the, uh, who manages the women's team, Piara Power, who has uh, been an anti-racism and diversity campaigner for the best part of 20 years. Gosh, some pretty big... Yeah, they, they are, but they, they, what I'd say, Anne, is they're not, they're not experienced custodians of a football club. They don't, they don't have to run. Was Ramovich. Uh, no, he wasn't, but I suppose if you can... He, knew, he inherited a lot of the governance that was already there. Ken Bates actually handed it over to him, but stayed in an advisory role in the first year to hand it over. Ramovich was still quite young at the time. He was only in his early 40s. Mm. quite young to be running a football club still in the modern era, especially when you consider this is one of the biggest clubs in the world now. So... You've got this charitable trust in charge, but it's a holding position. You can't sell it. Now, he's gone off to Moscow. It looks like he's gone off to Moscow. His, uh, his, his, his yacht, which was also mentioned by Anne yesterday. Well, it's uh, got two helipads, which really Yeah, is, so it? it's, on, it's on the radar. It's going back to Moscow. We think he's gone, gone back there. But the reality is you can't walk away from this club even if you want to. It's still and his it's concern. Still running on... In effect, Russian money. Oh, without question. Also, the Marina Granovskaya, she's the chief operating officer. She will be still running the club in terms of transfers, incoming player contracts, and the future of the coach, of course, and the football-related matters. If someone wants to buy the club, they have to go through the foundation now. So they'll bring in other expertise, legal expertise as well, as well as a bit of football expertise as well. But if you want to buy the club, and there have been a few interested parties in a few years, if you, in the last few years, who didn't necessarily want to deal with Roman Brownbridge because he was A, difficult to get hold of, and, D, and B, difficult to negotiate with. Mm. A lot How of speculators now. For? Well, this is the thing. I mean, uh, his, his, his loans are worth £1.5 billion, pounds, which we mentioned yesterday. I mean, that was, that was, you know, I said around about just over a billion. It's come, come to light last night, it's about 1.514. Someone would have to pay around that uh, to get. Brownbridge's loans back, they'd have to give him the, the, that, that, yeah, somewhere around about that kind of value. I mean, the, the real estate is worth a lot of money as well yeah. over in uh, SW6 there. So it might embolden some buyers now. And also, the, 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 he's lost about a billion dollars of wealth just in the last few days since the invasion. Mm. So he might be in a position to sell. I don't think he wants to. I think he loves that club. I really do. Because he's, not, he's made no money out of it. He's lost a lot of money. So, but it may, it may well empower some people to come forward and say, you know what, if we have to deal with the foundation people who aren't experienced football people and we have to buy it from them, we'd rather buy it from them than Abramovich. But the timing, though, is very peculiar. They've got a huge game this afternoon. It could be trophy number 20 today against Liverpool at Wembley if they do it. Uh, why you would do that? I mean, he's trying to, to stabilise the club, I think, in effect, with all the talk that's gone on. It's a huge, huge story, this. I think he's actually destabilised the team before a big game.